Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, your bartender in the OSR, Eric Tenkar. <clears throat> we have an uh, article here from Bloomberg Law. And by the way, at the bottom of the screen, Tenkar's there's tavern.games slash Pathfinder 2 bundle. I'll take you to the Pathfinder 2 bundle at Humble Bundle. It's actually a pretty good deal. $5, I think, at the sweet, sweet spot. You could go in for 25. I'm telling you, I think five is a no brainer. Uh, the, what do you call it? The beginner box, the core book, the best theory. <clears throat> a bargain. A bargain at twice the price. I'll put the link for that as a pinned comment below this. So, what do we have in this article? Well, Dungeons and Dragons uproar shows risk of tighter IP licensing. Dungeons and Dragons published Words of the Coast retraction of a proposal that would have significantly restricted its open gaming license demonstrates how companies must weigh the risk of public backlash when looking to tighten previously permissive intellectual property practices. And that's, listen, whenever you restrict something from where it was, there's going to be pushback. It's just the nature of the game. You take a speed limit. New York City, you lower it from 30 to 25. People push back against it. 30 was more permissive. Well, we needed to, uh, you know, vision zero to uh, cut back on uh, vehicle fatalities. Why are we? Why do we have the uh, change in licensing for the IP under the OGL? What was the proposal for it? Well, it was to keep bad actors from using the IP, theoretically, and to prevent companies from profiting without giving their fair share to Wizards of the Coast. So, the maker of the popular tabletop role-playing game faced calls for boycotts last month after its draft licensing terms were leaked. Draft. Again, they're referring to it as a draft. We know, many of us know, that this is, yes, it was draft, but somebody signed the contract. Okay, this was an enacted contract. It's moot now, but somebody did step up and do so. So, the plan would have required fans and third-party content creators, such as the popular Dungeons & Dragons web series Critical Role, to register all paid users of content based on Wizards IP and pay potential pricey royalties, among other proposed changes. Again, giving Wizards an insight into... Any kind of marketing. Well, what's really successful? Well, zombies, uh, everybody with the zombie uh, uh, themed adventure seems to be doing really well. Oh, and we got to do zombies. Come on. Hasbro owned Wizards ultimately made an about face, abandoning the proposal and making the game's core mechanics available through a Creative Commons license that will continue to allow free use by third party publishers. Okay. The Fuhrer is an example of IP enforcement negatively reverberating back on its owner, attorney said. Think about that. Again, when you take something and you've established the status quo for over 20 years, uh, that's two score, two decades, one score, two decades, um, you've set up a situation where there's an expectation. And when you remove that expectation, you upset the status quo. And that's what happened here. Uh, D&D's backtracking serving as an indication that there are times where companies may be better served by relaxed IP licenses. This is exactly true. And it's an amazing, amazing mistake. It was an amazing, it's an unforced foul error, red card. I don't know. Depends on what your sport is. Okay, never should have happened. Anybody competent in knowing how the community is, how the uh, retail environment is that has formed over the SRD and the OGO over the last 20 odd years, could have told you that this is going to not land well. But somebody sold it as an idea. This is how we make our money. From a legal perspective, Wizards would have been well within its rights to implement proposed restrictions, according to Aaron Swerdlow, an attorney at Weinberg Gonzer Frost. 
From a business perspective, however, the company likely backed off after realizing we might be cutting off our nose to spite our own face, he said. Whether, hey, listen, could you make the legal argument? Certainly. I, I think it was literally taking this, ignoring the spirit of the initial licensing agreement and turning that on its head, but neither here nor there. More than 50 million people worldwide have interacted with the game, according to Wizards. Interesting phraseology there, right? Interacted with the game. It does not mean there's 50 million players. 50 million have interacted with it. We've watched YouTube videos of people playing the game. So that number is, take with a grain of salt, several creators offer their own games, podcasts, and other media based on D&D mechanics, some racking up millions of dollars in revenue. And yes, which of the coasts wanted their share of that. For example, Critical Role started as a live stream of D&D campaigns and has since been adapted into an Amazon.com animated series. The group has an audience of almost a half million people each week, according to the group's website. Following the leaked draft, third-party creators shared an open letter as part of the open D&D campaign, referring to the proposal as anti-competitive. It was monopolistic behavior. No lies there. And saying it chokes the vibrant community that has flourished under the original license. All this is certainly true. It was correct. I don't think they had anything to do with Wizards of the Coast turning things around. That argument, though, is what the rest of us saw, the rest of the community saw. We agreed with this argument. And our agreeing with it is what turned them around because they started losing revenue. Creators also urged fans to cancel their subscriptions to D&D Beyond, described as an official digital tool set and game companion, which led to a crash on the website subscription management page. And this has been downplayed. Oh, it shouldn't be easy to uh, delete your account, cancel your account. Why not? You can't ha- if, if so many people are canceling that you crash the servers, again... Though that's data that does not lie. The backlash is notable in its ferocity, Lemley said. They have really angered their user base base with an overbroad set of restrictions. I will say what I've said in the past. Um, I know of at least two sources who had direct contact with Wizards of the Coast, people in positions of authority, and they were told when they complained but they made their concerns known about the proposed 1.1 OGL, uh, they were told, what? It's a great deal. What are you worried about? What, that, 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 no, there's nothing here. This, this, it doesn't. It's fine. You, you're all overreacting. You're all overreacting. Sure, we can change it with a 30-day notice to whatever we want it to be. And you're locked in until hell freezes over. But uh, come on, who wouldn't want to do business under this? Well, obviously, which is the coach did, because it would have been great for them. It wasn't great for everybody else. Uh, Wizard didn't respond to requests for comment. However, the game's executive producer, Kyle Brink, wrote in a blog post last week that the new Creative Commons license is open and irrevocable in a way that doesn't require you to take our word for it. Folks, it's the most telling statement coming from Wizards of the Coast. We know we betrayed you. We know that we gaslit you. We know that we outright lied to you. So the only way we, you can ever figure out that what we're telling you is and we're actually not going to fuck you over on this one is we're going to put this in the Creative Commons because we can't revoke it. Ken Walsh, General Counsel of Creative Commons, said that anyone using material under that license would be able to trust they can continue using it under those terms indefinitely. Okay. What's next? Uh, Premac Rogers, an illegal representative for Open, uh, a partner in Open, sorry, Noah Downs, a partner at Premac Rogers, an illegal rep for Open D&D, 
Senate Creative Commons license preserves the status quo, but as the game evolves, Wizards, and I've been saying this, may put out new content under an entirely new open gaming license. It won't be called an OGL because that would require them to revoke the old OGLs. And that's going to start a whole other fucking war. They're going to they're call it the, I don't know, the One System License. Ooh, OSL. Or something shit like that. The One Game License. There you go. It's still an OGL, but it's not open. It's one. Uh, Lisa Macklin said Wizards may also choose to put certain aspects of their IP under exclusive licenses. Such as the creation of Dungeons and Dragons related non fungible tokens, NFTs, which she said are considered a cash cow for the future. I don't understand NFTs. Um, I've not asked for the rights to NFTs in any of the artwork that I've commissioned. So maybe I was foolish. Time will tell. Apart from Wizards' potential next steps, the effect of the uproar is still far reaching and indicate a public need for expanding the open IP universe instead of restricting it. Some attorneys have said. They thought they could make more money, but I don't think they took into account the chilling effect it would have on this sort of an ecosystem. Interesting. Sani Sisha, doctoral candidate at Harvard Law. Uh, they said that Wizards' consideration of tightened IP terms may force creators and fans to reconsider involvement with the game and whether they would be able to shield spin off creations. If you think about going into this business or even continuing to operate in this community, you have to be concerned because they don't really know what the future holds. And that's what this has done to us. All right. I am a small publisher. I, I've had questions asked me earlier today. Uh, what's going on with Continual Light? I don't know. Do I put it out under the OGL uh, and the three point, the 3X SRD, 3.5 SRD? Or, and the, and the OGL, the OGL is still in effect. Or do I uh, put it under Creative Commons? And what effect will Creative Commons have by me doing that? Because I don't mind having people do derivative work. I want them to support Continual Light. I don't necessarily want them to do what one person did, which was to completely uh, republish Continual Light with a few uh, adjustments and they would say improvements, uh, give no credit toward me whatsoever. And then when people found the original Swords of Wizardry Continual Light, thought I was stealing my ideas from him. That annoyed me, but that's part of the process, right? You go into that with the OGL. So I don't know. Um, uh, Sisha said it's possible for third-party creators to protect themselves many potential copyright infringement allegations from which through the fair use doctrine or by testing the enforceability of the Dungeons and Dragons IP. Sure, you can do that. Um, I don't think anybody wants to be on the other side of a lawsuit from Wizards of the Coast. Just throwing that out there. Um, more broadly, Wizards may not have the IP enforcement power than it believes it has. I've heard that argument from a number of people. Smart people. Lawyers. Here's the issue. Do you have the, um, the the dollars, the deep pockets to litigate that? Is it worth it? I don't know. Concrete protection for the game with actually surprisingly complicated matter. Given the game's characters are often closer to stock or generic characters without distinguishing features, Wizards may find it difficult to enforce its copyrights. Basic mechanics are not things that would qualify for copyright. A lot of the more descriptive and creative material on top of it might, but it's always hard to make a call. Again, do you want to take it to court? I wouldn't want to. Was something that for me is a hobby business? No. Whether fans or third-party creators would bring legal action is another issue. Well, it's not whether we would bring legal action. It's whether legal action would be brought against us. And I don't think anybody's looking to jump into the pool with which is other coast. Not, it, it, it's, it's not going to be a friendly swim. My take on it. All right, folks. On that note, again, the link at the bottom is an affiliate link. The link that's going to be in the pinned comment. Affiliate link. If you go shopping there, you help to support the tavern. We are currently not uh, monetized. That's okay. But, again, when you shop at Humble Bundle or the drive through links, I should probably put those up at some point. 
Um, you seriously do help support me, my co-hosts, and what we do. And I, it's really appreciated. Be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, roll them well. I will be back again tomorrow with uh, some more random content. Content? Content? I can't speak. I mu it must be, uh, I don't know, transmissible or something, I think. I think, I think I'm infected with I can't speak itis. All right, folks.